Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher. This is October 2019, but about five months ago in the last semester of school at our local high school where I taught so many, many years, the welding teacher and the welding class decided to make a blast furnace and produce some iron. Well, I went down there and shot videos of that on a rather cold, windy day in May, and they had some troubles that day. It wasn't totally successful, but I think it's still an interesting process that they went through. They're going to do it again next year, hopefully with a little greater success. But they learned a lot from this process, and it's not an easy process to make iron. It's probably uh, never been done in a high school before, and uh, maybe you know why now. But they did start with taconite and... Uh, coke and other things that were donated by a steel company. So I think you'll find this very interesting. At the end of the video, I uh, interview the teacher, Mr. Taylor, who I have known some time. And uh, this is done mainly outside, but you'll see some views of the old uh, high school building where I was uh, teaching many, many years, a uh, machine shop, and now it's strictly a storeroom as they built a new building across the street and that's where the welding shop is right now. So let's go to this older footage and take a look at it and see what you think. I think it's really an amazing thing that this class did. So let's begin. Now this is what was donated by the steel company. We got coke which is virtually pure carbon and we got taconite. Now this taconite from the Masabi Range up in uh, Minnesota contains limestone. So you, that is why we're not using or they are not using uh, white limestone because it's already in the taconite and that of course is like the flux. But these are the ingredients that are being used. Howdy, it's Tubal Cain again and I'm here at the high school where I taught many many years and this in fact is the old machine shop room. Now it's used mainly for storage, but the subject of today's video is all about pouring iron and a blast furnace. So the current welding teacher, Mr. Taylor, has built a blast furnace, and let's take a look at it. Tomorrow you'll see it in action, or later in this video, I should say. So here is the furnace. And this is the first time I've seen it. This is the Twier. And see if we can see the inside of it here. And this is a drop bottom type of cupola. And the lid will hinge. And then in these bins here, this is Coke. And this was a gift from the steel mill. This is Coke. And here is the ore in the form of taconite in these two bins. Now tomorrow, I know the camera is waving here, but tomorrow the heister here will move all of this equipment out across the street. And that's where this actual demonstration will occur. This is the big blower that will be used I believe it goes into here. I think that's what he said. And the smaller blower would be used to preheat it to get the initial fire started. There's another bin of coke. Here's all of the safety gear. I think they call these pota baked potato wraps or something like that. And the crucible and all this stuff was made here in the welding shop sand and in the bags here now has been pre-measured and weighed there's so many pounds of coke I forgot what he said in the bag and then the taconite in the bucket so each one of those is a layer that will be added to the blast furnace once it is initially started So I think this will be very interesting. It's the first time they've done it and only the second time this has been, been done in a high school as far as I understand. And here's the safety gear, the helmets. And all of this was donated also by a steel company. 
This is what's left of my old office. Yeah. My desk sat right there and the auto shop on the other side. And then the iron will be poured into these molds. These are sand molds. It's silica sand. The binder being water glass or sodium silicate. And we're hoping for good weather and no rain. Pray for us. This is the school and of course there have been many changes here since I was here. And across the street there was a house. And you can see part of the foundation yet, and that's where the demonstration will be tomorrow. And uh, this is Mr. Taylor here with some of his students, and uh, he's the one in charge. And, <laughs> and uh, he's a little nervous about this. He's nervous about the weather and the danger and, and the success of the whole yeah. thing. Because Not a be, little nervous, a lot nervous. <laughs> He's very nervous. Yeah. So, so, uh, and he, you can see how much work that he and his classes have have put into this project. So we'll see you tomorrow. Well here we are on May 5th. It's 8 in the morning and it's a dreary kind of chilly day. 51 degrees here at the high school and the boys and the teacher are getting ready for the big iron pour. They've got the blast furnace out and I think are about ready to fire it up. So let me park the car. They've got the street blocked off and uh, we'll see what they're doing over there. He's gonna film it. He has, uh, just... All right, here we are at the blast furnace and they've got the preheat going. That's been going for 15, 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. And they're using charcoal and a lighter. You can see the heat and they have the small blower. For safety, down on the concrete, they have a layer of sand in case there would be any spill of slag or anything. And this will initially be a slow process to bring up to heat. I'm going to add a little more. You can lift me. And that's Mr. Taylor. Yep, the coke is definitely going. Dumping in the coke. Leave it up, leave it up. Still. Now, as shown yesterday, the taconite and the coke is pre measured. Coke, of course, is virtually pure carbon made from coal in coking ovens and the taconite pellets actually have the flux or the limestone in them so that's why you're not seeing any separate limestone as you normally would see in a blast furnace. This is just a practice run on how the uh, ladle will be handled while it's still cool. In this tub are the clay plugs that will be used to block the hole where the metal will come out at the bottom of the furnace. 
These are the sand molds that the kids made. Alright, I'm gonna shut this off. Nope, you're good, Tom. You stay. And they're changing blowers to the large blower.
gonna happen. We're gonna shut the fan off, pull the hose out. Don't do anything yet. We gotta pull that pin. We gotta have the floor drop. I need someone to have a water hose. Yeah, Randall, let me get those legs real quick. We are not gonna water the furnace. We're just watering the what drops. I'll draw, I'll pull the pin and drop it. Tell me when. What? I'll pull I'll pull the pin. Pins on this side. Oh, yeah. yeah. You gotta have gloves on if you're gonna even hold that. I'm telling you, this is gonna be real. This one's gonna be hot. Grab the ratchet, grab the ratchet, grab the ratchet. We might need it. No, we might need the pickaxe. I'm here at the high school where the iron pour uh, was took place the other day and this is Mr. Taylor the welding teacher and he's just going to summarize what happened and uh, th his thoughts about how he's going to handle this or continue this program next year. Mr. Taylor. Hello. Well we with the iron pour we it was a good day in the respect that we from the idea of starting just the idea of, hey, let's build a blast furnace, that the fact that we got it built, we've got all the tools, we got all the stands, we got everything built, and we even test fired it, we got molds, and no one got hurt, and we worked together as a well-oiled machine. Uh, there was no egos or no arguments or fights. So in that respect, it was a huge success. We did get a trickle of iron, a, a very light trickle, and it was a little bit, it was good, but it was a little disappointing. And what we, our main mistake that we found was we, when we got a trickle, we got a little too excited and we added too much too fast. We added too much more, too much uh, iron again. And we think we choked our furnace down, we smothered it by not, in a, by not allowing the furnace to breathe. And, and you think you'll continue this next year? It's oh. about the end of the school year right now. There's only a few yeah. days left. Yeah, we only got about a, what, a week or two left, and mm -hmm. it's a huge undertaking. We're most 100% going to do it again because we did get a taste of success. The kids were fired up about it, no pun intended, <laughs> and we most definitely want to try it. We're going to learn from our mistakes, and we are going to improve upon those and we're gonna capitalize on our successes and we most definitely plan on uh, another year of pouring iron. And maybe I'll be back with you with another video next year and uh, to see the progress that you've made. So thank you so much, Mr. Taylor, for talking to me and spending the extra time that was required uh, to put on this uh, demonstration, so. Thank you, it was we'll, my pleasure. Yes. All right. How's that?